Hi everyone, this is Daryl Legacy, Instructional Designer at Hack. Many of you may be recording your Zoom classes, either for students with accommodations or just as a review for all students. This is good practice, as research shows students learn something better if they see it multiple times. However, if you're recording to your computer, you may be noticing extremely long conversion times for the video to be available. Especially if your video is an hour or longer, it can sometimes take 12 hours or more for it to completely convert. And some faculty have had the conversion just stop midstream, making it unusable. A better option is to save to the cloud. To enable this, go to MyHack, then Zoom Video Conferencing, and Zoom Login. Click Sign In to go to your account. Click Settings in the menu on the left side, and then Recording in the menu bar along the top of that section. Here, you'll see the options for local recording and cloud recording. If you've been recording locally, that button should already be on. You can toggle it off and toggle the one for cloud recording on if you only want to record to the cloud from now on. Or you can leave both turned on, which will give you a pop-up in Zoom asking where you want to save when you choose to record. I'm going to turn them both on for now to show what that looks like. You'll see that there are a lot more options under cloud recording than local recording. Let's look at the important ones. The default view of the recording will be gallery view. This means that when no one is sharing their screen, up to 25 participants will be shown in the grid style gallery. It will highlight the box of whoever is speaking. If you check the box that says record active speaker with shared screen, when someone is sharing their screen, it will only show the active speaker in a small window at the top right while also recording the shared screen. If you select record gallery view with shared screen, it will record up to 25 participant windows in addition to the shared screen. This can be overwhelming, so it's usually best to just select the top one, Record Active Speaker with Shared Screen. If you check the box that says Record Active Speaker, Gallery View, and Shared Screen separately, Zoom will create three different files, one for each of the views. This isn't recommended since none of these views are as useful and it requires you to download and upload multiple files. Record an audio-only file is also not necessary for most users. This records the audio separately from the video, which again is not as useful for anyone wanting to use the recording later. Save chat messages from the meeting slash webinar is useful if you want to have the chat saved as a separate text file. This could be useful if you want to save questions or comments from users. Otherwise, you can leave it unchecked. The options under Advanced Cloud Recording Settings include the ability to have the real time and date stamped into the recording, showing users' names, showing thumbnails when someone is sharing their screen, or saving poll results from the meeting. These are optional and just come down to your preference. You can try them out and see if you like them. The two important ones here are audio transcript and save closed caption as a VTT file. Checking these boxes will have Zoom automatically create a transcript file for you in VTT format. This is always more accurate than YouTube's automatic captions, and having it as a VTT file lets you upload directly to YouTube when you upload your video. Make your choices and click the Save button. Now let's start a Zoom meeting and try recording. Once your meeting is up and running, click the Record button. If you left both the Record Locally and Record to the Cloud buttons on, you'll see both options here. Choose Record to the Cloud. When you're finished and click the stop button, a pop-up will tell you that you'll receive an email when the recording is ready. Once you receive that email, go back into the Zoom settings through the Zoom login link on MyHack. Click the Recordings tab on the left, and then make sure Cloud Recordings is selected at the top. This will now show you all your cloud recordings. Find the recording you want and click the title. This will bring you to a page with more detailed information. Hover over the file labeled Shared Screen with Speaker View and click the download arrow. This should download that file to your downloads folder or wherever you have it set to save. While you're here, also download the audio transcript with the same method. Notice at the top of this page, it tells you how long until this recording is automatically deleted. Currently, that limit is 60 days. That means if you haven't downloaded these files before then, they'll be deleted forever. 
Fortunately, we did just download the files, so we're safe. One note here, you should not upload these files directly to D2L Brightspace. There's a limit on how large uploaded files can be, and it won't allow students to see the captions. That's a key part of accessibility and universal design for learning, and those captions can be useful for lots of students, even if they don't have any kind of hearing impairment. So instead, we should upload this to YouTube and share the link. Let's go back to MyHack and click on Google Apps in the nav bar, and then YouTube. If you frequently use other email accounts on your computer besides just your hack account, you should make sure you're in the correct YouTube account. Do this by clicking on the colored circle in the top right and choosing Switch Account. This will show any accounts that are logged in, and you can click on a different one if you're not currently in your hack YouTube account. Once you've confirmed that you are in your hack account, click the small camcorder icon in the upper right. Depending on which screen you're on, it will be either white or red. Choose Upload Video. A new window will open, allowing you to either drag and drop your video file or use the Select Files button to browse and find it. Once you add your video, you can edit the title and add a description if you'd like. Scroll down and click the button labeled No, it's not made for kids. Then click Next. This new page allows you to upload the VTT captions file we downloaded earlier from Zoom. Click Add on the right of the subtitles element. Click Upload File and With Timing and find that VTT file to upload. Once you add it, you'll see that it adds the captions synced up with the time they were said. Click Done. Click Next until you get to the last screen where it asks how you want the visibility to be set. Private requires you to add the email address for anyone that can view it. This is only a good choice if it contains sensitive material that absolutely must not be viewed by more than one or two people. Unlisted is the best option for sharing class lectures or meetings. This should be your default choice most of the time. Public is only for videos that don't contain any sensitive material and you think would be useful to people outside your class or the hack community. Most of the time, you don't want to choose this. After you select the visibility, click the copy icon next to the blue link on the right. This copies the link to the video so that you can email it or place it in D2L Brightspace. Now click Save. If you forgot to copy the URL while adding the video, you can easily do it here by hovering over the video title and clicking the three small dots. Choose Get Shareable Link and it will copy the link for you. Now you can paste the link into an email or into your D2L Brightspace course. If you want to place it in Brightspace, go to your course and the module or submodule where you want it to appear. Click the blue New button. There are two ways to add it, as a link or as a video. We'll add it each way and see what the difference is. If you choose Add Video or Audio, you can paste the copied link into the window, then give it a title and click Save. If you choose Create a Link instead, give it a title and paste the link into the URL box. Make sure you leave the Open as External Resource box checked. Using the Add Video or Audio option opens the video right in D2L. And you can see the captions right there by just clicking the CC button. The advantage is that students don't ever have to leave the D2L Brightspace environment and they can click back to go to the previous page. Using the Create a Link option opens the video in a new tab in the browser and brings you right to the full YouTube page. Again, you can easily turn captions on with the CC button. This is the most foolproof method, but it does sometimes confuse students who don't realize they need to click back to Brightspace in a different tab. They can't just click the back button. Either method should be fine in most situations, but if your students are having issues or getting confused, consider uploading with the other method. 
I hope this helps with recording and sharing Zoom recordings. Saving to the cloud does have the extra steps of downloading the video and transcript file back to your computer after the conversion is finished, but the benefits are well worth it. By saving to the cloud, your computer will no longer be stuck in a cycle of long video conversions that make it impossible to start a new recording or turn off your computer. Plus, recording to the cloud has the advantage of giving you a pretty accurate automatic transcript that you can easily upload to YouTube. Just remember to download the recording files before the 60 days are up. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please contact me or someone else in the CDI team.